Ballot item number 47, private members notice the motion number 79. Mr. Singh. Member from Bramorley, Gore Malton. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I move that in the opinion of this House, the Government of Ontario should recognize the state-organized violence like, perpetrated against the Sikhs throughout India as a genocide. Mr. Singh has moved private member notice of motion number 79 pursuant to uh, section standing order 98. The member has 12 minutes for his presentation. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, this issue, Madam Speaker, is so vitally important to the people of this province and particularly the people in my constituency, but it's an issue that impacts people across the world, the Sikh community, but not only the Sikh community, anyone who hails from South Asia. The problem that it currently exists, Madam Speaker, is that as it stands, the violence perpetrated against the Sikh community is referred to as a riot. It's often referred to as anti-Sikh riots. Madam Speaker, the problem is when you refer to this violence as a riot, it suggests spontaneous violence. It suggests that there was two groups that fought against each other. In fact, it casts aspersion and blame against communities who are innocent. The facts that are in this case uh, are very clear. There was a chief justice, justice of the Supreme Court of India. India's Supreme Court, a retired justice, Justice G.T. Nanavati, was commissioned to do a report which is called the Nanavati Report. In that report, he makes it abundantly clear these attacks were not spontaneous. He makes it clear that they could not have happened but for the organization of elected officials. He points out that public transit, the DTC, the Delhi Transit Commission, was used to bus in people from other locations so that these attacks could occur. In fact, the other reports point out that voter lists were used. Voter lists, which are tools for democracy, were used to identify homes that were sick homes, and then the mobs were directed to attack and kill those people. In addition, the police were told before this attack occurred to disarm and to remove any sort of weapons that could be used to protect themselves from sick homes. This was all done in a systematic and planned way. In fact, Hindu families, sick uh, Muslim families, put their own lives at risk to save their sick neighbors. They put their lives at risk to save their neighbors, and if it continues to be referred to as a riot, it does an injustice to those Hindu families who stood up to protect their own sick neighbors. It does an injustice to the Muslim families that almost risk they almost risk uh, death to protect their sick neighbors it does a grave injustice because it's false the truth of the matter is the evidence all points to very clearly the fact that this was a state organized attack it was systematic it was organized it was planned and it was to target anyone that was of sick descent the kara that i wear on my wrist and other articles of faith were used as the identifiers that this person would be killed. Now, um, the evidence, as I said, is outstanding, but it's important to frame this and to understand why it's so important. The riot divides a community. The term riot divides a community because it suggests that people just spontaneously erupted and tried to kill their neighbors. That is false. It could not have happened. The evidence in the Nanavati Commission points out that it could not have happened that way. This was not a spontaneous set of circumstances. And it wasn't neighbors that were killing neighbors. There were people that were bussed in from outside. They were organized. They were directed to do this. In fact, the Nanavati Commission points out that key elected officials from all levels of government, there's evidence, there's affidavits that point to them being responsible for organizing these attacks. So it's important that we move away from the language of riot, which divides our community, and move towards the language of genocide, which casts the blame on the true organizers of this attack. This attack didn't only impact people in New Delhi, which was the concentration of the attack, but impacted people across India. Uh, the Sikh community was targeted across India. And some of the stories are tremendously harrowing. Uh, one personal story, I was actually getting my robes fitted as, as a lawyer. One of the things that we wear, much like what you're wearing, Madam Speaker, we wear robes. And the tailor that was fitting my robes uh, asked if I knew much about what happened in 1984 in November. And I said, no, you know, of course I know what happened. He's like, I lived through it. And, and I said, really? He said, in fact, uh, I, mean, I knew the man by his name was, it was a Hindu man. He said, uh, in fact, uh, I can tell you a story about what happened. I'm like, yeah, definitely tell me the story. He said, uh, I was a tailor then as well, and my best friend was also a tailor. He was a sick man, 
and his shop was burnt down and he fled his home and I took him into my home and I was afraid. He said, I was deathly afraid for my life, but I knew that they were, be, they were targeting Sikhs, so I let him into my home. Uh, afterwards, he asked me if I could go, the, the friend that was a Sikh said, could you go back to my tailor shop? There's a lockbox which I kept all my, all my savings. And at night, when there was a curfew, this tailor said uh, he left his home. There was a curfew. Again, he could have been killed himself. He went to the tailor shop, which was all burnt down, found and retrieved the lockbox and brought back this, the entire life savings of, this, of, his, of his best friend. And it's just one, just one small example, but there were so many harrowing stories. Um, the one story that, that I want to share with you that to me is something different from what I normally have heard is uh, a story of a reporter. Now we've heard, uh, I've met witnesses, I've met uh, survivors who talk about what they've experienced. They tell me how uh, horrific it was to see their family members slain in front of their eyes, the fact that uh, they saw their brothers being killed. Many sick men were, were targeted because of the very visible identity of being a sick, but women were targeted if they wore a kara, which is that steel bracelet. So the articles of faith were used to identify someone and to kill them. Uh, one of the things, though, that I was, I was really, um, it impacted me a lot, was a story by Rahul Bedi, who is a Delhi-based correspondent writing for the BBC. And in this story, he writes, uh, uh, when he was a reporter with the Indian newspaper, Express, the Indian Express newspaper. And he talks about uh, being with two colleagues and visiting the area uh, where the attacks occurred right after the funeral of, of Mrs. Gandhi. And he talks about walking through laneways littered with bodies. He, he sees body parts that were hacked off, hair that was brutally hacked off of people's head. Uh, at one point, he went to a certain tenements, certain buildings where the building, the bodies were piled up so high that the drainage uh, was blocked and there was flooding going on in the streets. Uh, he went to a cer certain area and noticed uh, a mother that was polio afflicted holding on to her daughter. They went to lift the daughter up to see if she needed some care and the woman just froze in terror and, and screamed out because she thought this was someone else that was going to kill her child. Uh, they saw the, this reporter who's writing uh, after the fact writes about seeing a two, uh, a young child that was hiding underneath a bed, and in that room that the child was hiding was littered with dead bodies. The child had wrapped a cloth around his stomach uh, because of a wound that he had suffered and was hiding there to survive. They took that child to the hospital. That child later on uh, passed away. Uh, they were at this location. 24 hours later, police arrived, but the carnage had already um, left so many already dead. And the reporter writes, Police arrived in Thurlok Brilli 24 hours later when the Indian Express revealed the horrific massacres. Sadly, there were no six left to protect. So, uh, there are other cities that have actually um, recognized this, this, uh, this genocide, and I want to point out some of the cities that have done so already. These cities are in California, many of them. And I just want to list out some of the cities that have recognized. The city of Stockton in California, April 27, 2016. Kerman City in California, November 4, 2015. Bakersfield, California, uh, December 12, 2015. And Harvey in the Cook County of Illinois on November 13, 2014. These are cities that have already recognized November 1984 as a genocide. In fact, the California State Assembly uh, released a resolution uh, April 13th, 2015, and uh, the resolution chair was jo uh, Richard Gordon, chair, ACR 34, and this was um, amended on April 8th, 2015. The subject is November 1984 anti-sick programs, the remembrance, and in this, the uh, Assembly of California recognizes um, the attacks on Sikhs as an anti-sick program. Now, program is much closer to the truth. A program indicates uh, organized attack against a minority community. But what we're asking today is to recognize this as a genocide. The definition of genocide, as defined by Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention of Punishments of Crime of Genocide, 1948, states, uh, as any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, ethnical, racial, or religious group, and the following acts can involve killing members of the group, causing serious bodily harm or mental harm to the group, deliberately, deliberately inflicting on that group conditions of life calculated to bring upon the physical destruction or forcibly transferring children of one group to another. The definition makes it absolutely clear. And in fact, currently, the government 
of India, the current government of India, the Home Minister, and this is an article from the Hindu, uh, a very well-established newspaper, indicates 1980, this is the headline of the article in the Hindu, December 27, 2014, 1984 riots were genocide, says Rajnath. That's the Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh of the current administration in India. The Delhi State Assembly passed a resolution condemning the Sikh massacres of 1984, and this was in July 1, 2015. The Delhi State Assembly, much like our assembly, passed a resolution uh, condemning the massacre of 1984 and specifically calling on the investigation of Congress leader Jagdish Teitler uh, and um, other individuals who were involved in the planning and organization. Listen, uh, Madam Speaker, this is an issue that is so deeply important. To, in order to ensure that there is reconciliation and healing, the first step for reconciliation and healing is to ensure that the harm that a community suffered was recognized, and to also eradicate any misconception that this is two communities fighting against each other. There is a horrible misconception that this was somehow a Hindu-Sikh conflict. It was never a Hindu-Sikh conflict, and I want to highlight that. Hindu families put their lives at risk to protect Sikhs. This was a state-organized, this was a systema systematically organized attack, and it's so important for the healing and reconciliation of those individuals who suffer from the trauma of this incident to have it recognized here in Ontario. Ontario has recognized at the Provincial Assembly other genocides like the Hol Holodomor Bill uh, 147 in 2009, as well as the Armenian Genocide March 27, 1990. So there is a precedent for this for this assembly to recognize genocide. This assembly has recognized it before. This would do a great justice to the people that are suffering. It would clear up the misconception, which is very harmful. The notion of a genocide unites communities. It says it's not the community's fault. It was those who were organizers, the state that was in organizing this attack. It was not community members. It was not your neighbors that were responsible. This would bring people together instead of dividing people. The terminology riot continues to divide our community, continues to hurt the community, and it doesn't offer an opportunity for healing and reconciliation. People fled the human rights violations in India. They fled this genocide. They fled the attacks in November of 1984 to come to Canada. Canada is a beacon of human rights, a place where human rights are celebrated and protected. Let's send a message that we denounce these acts of violations against human rights, we denounce genocide, and we support human rights. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.